Glory to your name. Glory to your name. God. Hallelujah. You 
persecuted say Persecuted, not abandoned Struck down, but not destroyed Struck down, not destroyed We are more than overcome We are more than overcomers We're hard pressed, but not crushed Hard pressed, but not crushed Say, oh
for a headache tonight, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome you to the second night of our Faith and Finance Conference. And I can tell you, I've been waiting all year for this week to come. And I can guarantee you it's going to be a week to remember. Amen. Come on, let's open up with a word of prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the men of God that have joined us for this meeting. We pray for their families, their finances, and we just declare that this meeting is one that will change our lives forever. Lord, we thank you that what we hear will be a blessing, and we thank you that our hearts are prepared to receive. And tonight, Lord, we just give you liberty to move and to minister and to have your way here tonight. We open our hearts, we open our ears, and we believe to receive the Word of God that changes our life. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all that agree with that shout, amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a big old hand clap tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be unto God. Well, go ahead and take your seats real quick. I, um, I'm excited, man. We've got a couple of pastors in the house. Pastor Darrell Little is in the house with us tonight. Praise God. Pastors Walton are here tonight, Eddie and his lovely wife. And we got the man of God of the hour, Pastor Charles Orr tonight. I'm telling you, you're in for a treat, praise God. But I tell you prophetically, man, I believe God is doing some wonderful things in our lives in the body of Christ. And tonight I want to turn your attention very quickly as we prepare our hearts to receive our evening offering I want to turn your attention to Luke chapter 5, and then when I finish, we'll receive the offering, and then the praise team will have one more song, and then the voice that you'll hear after that will be none other than Pastor Charles Orr from uh, Mount Pleasant Word Church International. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's look at this just for a moment. This is a faith and a finance conference as well. So I want you to get your faith stirred up, but I want you to get your money as well. Amen. Somebody say, I want my money. And I want it now. Those of you online this evening, we welcome you as well. We pray blessings over your lives. But the Bible here in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, it reads this way. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. They were coming to hear the Logos. And the Bible says, And he saw two ships standing by the lake, and a fisherman. the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon. Now, everyone that was there got the Logos, the written word of God. They got a word preached unto them. But Peter got a rhema word spoken into his life. The Bible says that Jesus spoke to him and said, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. This drought was a supernatural harvest of fish that were coming unto Peter and unto his mates. The Bible here is talking about the Logos versus the Rhema. My prayer for you and, and for me as well tonight is that we would have ears to hear the Word of God, but we would have our, our hearts open to hear a word from God concerning our lives. I believe God wants to speak prophetically to you. I believe God wants to speak specifically into your everyday life. And we got the man of the hour to do just that. But the Bible here says that Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we've toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Jesus told him to let everything he had out. And I'm telling you tonight, I want you to open up, man, and don't allow anything to hinder you tonight from receiving what God has in store for you. The Bible says, and when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and the net break. Oh, my God. He says, and they 
beckon unto their partners to come and help them. And he says, which were in the other ships, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both of the ships so that they began to sink. My prayer tonight is that you would have a net breaking, boat sinking, harvest of revelation come to you tonight. And I believe that what you'll hear tonight will change your life forever. I believe that wealth and prosperity is there for you and I. I believe that it's time for us to stir our faith up. It's time for us to move forward with supernatural progression and tap into the wealth flow that God has for us. And I'm telling you, it's a net breaking, boat sinking harvest that God has in store for you. But how many of you know this? That the harvest has a purpose, praise God. You go on down in the, in the context here, and he says in verse 8, When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. He says, For, I, for, for he was astonished at all that with, were with him at the draught of the fish which came unto them. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. One of the things that I, I believe that is, is due for us is that we would develop such a passion for God and begin to be fishers of men. The wealth is to be able to go and catch men. The wealth is for us to go out and minister the gospel and to see lives changed and to see the kingdom of God advance. And I'm telling you tonight, what you are about to hear is going to put you in position to do just that. And I want to announce to you right now that the wealth that's coming your way, it is about the kingdom of God. It'll be about generational wealth. And it'll also include some of your personal benefit, praise God. God is concerned about you living and enjoying life. But he wants you to make sure the kingdom is first. And if we'll get that priority in order, everything in our life will begin to turn around. And I'm telling you, tonight is a night for things to change for you. So if you're preparing your hearts to give tonight, if you need an offering envelope, slip your hand up. Our ushers are here to be a blessing to you. And tonight, I want you to pray. We're going to pray. And I want you to hear from God. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. And then you watch your water turn to wine. Amen? And I'm telling you, this is a word for you tonight. Those of you online, you see all of the ways in which to give. You can go to our website at bbci.org. You can text to give by texting the word GIVE to 256-670-1750. All of those are vehicles, the cash apps, the Toddly app. Do whatever is required of you and make sure you sow into this meeting, sow into this word, and let's make sure these men of God these men of God leave here blessed, praise God, because of what we do tonight. Amen. We love you. Thank God for you. Go ahead and receive the offering, man. Come on. Uh, well, I tell you what, you guys go ahead and sing now while we receive the offering, and then we're going to get the man of God up. Is that all right? All right, let's do that. So they're going to play a tune as you prepare your gifts tonight, and then we'll come back. And uh, I'm not even coming back. We're going to bless the offering right now. I'm ready for some word. Come on. Uh, let's, let's bless the offering tonight. Father, we thank you for every seed sown. We thank you for every life that's blessed tonight and every life that is sowing tonight. We declare you receive a net breaking, boat sinking harvest in your life, in your finances. And I declare over your life tonight, you'll never be broke another day in your life. In Jesus' name, somebody ought to shout amen. Somebody ought to shout unto God. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house. Glory be to God. All right, listen. Ushers, go ahead and receive our offering tonight. The next voice you'll hear will be that of Pastor Charles L. Orr. And I want you to stand to your feet when he comes. Give him a great hand clap and get ready for this word tonight. Amen. God bless you.
mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break, but they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the unmovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe.
Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I got the pastor's, I have the pastor's mic. You want to know where it is? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all just come on down. Come on down. Our God is so awesome. What an awesome time to be in the presence of the Lord. And I bless him with everything within me. Praise God. Thank God for Pastor Darius, Creighton, and Alicia. Give God praise for them today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is so good. I know they're making some adjustments, and, and uh, we'll come up to speed in just a minute. Praise God. I'm, I'm just excited to be here. Thank God for your pastors in a, in a mighty way. Mighty, mighty men, women of, women of God, his family. I thank God for them. I thank God. Praise God for the pastors who are here tonight. Praise God. I, I may not know all of them, but thank God. If God called you, praise God. I know you're in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank God for Pastor Walton. and Praise God, Pastor Darrell Little. Praise God, my brother. A, a prophet in his own right. Praise God. I just know I love, I love men of God. I, I just encourage men of God to stay faithful to what God's called them to do. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from Mount Pleasant Word Church International in Leeton, Alabama. Mount Pleasant Word Church, praise God, International in Kadari, Uganda, Africa. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, when I take off, I won't, be, I won't be stopping for nothing. But I want you to know it's just uh, been, been preaching now for the last uh, couple of weeks. Praise God. I went to Uganda, Africa, and we had a leadership meeting there. Started on Thursday. I had two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. I preached every minute of it. I'm not going to do that tonight, so just rest. <laughs> I've already been instructed 50 minutes or an hour, and I believe we can stay within that. But, uh, and then we came back, and we had Sunday morning service at our church. And then we were down in Hartzell uh, from Sunday evening through last night. Praise God, in the time of refreshing conference. And so this is not the only time I've stood to preach the word of God, but I'm excited about tonight. I'm telling you, I am so excited. And God has blessed us with another opportunity to share the word of God at Briz Builders Church International. Give God praise for what God is doing with Pastor Darius and Alicia Creighton here. His family, God is so awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise God, I want you to just know my wife is over here, Pastor the Tamar Rochelle R., a prophetess in her own right. I thank God for her. She's my encourager and encouragement other than the Lord that's always very present help in time of need. Can you say amen? I'm going to pray and get off into the word of God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord God, for the healing power of Jesus that's working in my body, working in our bodies. Thank you for the ability, Lord God, to, to declare and decree your word in a mighty way. And God, we want to thank you tonight that we release ourselves to be used of you to bless the people of God, to bless the sheep of God. And God, even as we go forward, we pray the anointing of God would increase for every good gift to be lavished upon us every blessing to come God salvation to flood this house like never before God I believe for faith to begin to rise in such a way God that everyone that needs healing it comes forth everyone that needs deliverance it comes forth everyone that need a financial blessing it comes forth everything that's needed shall be supplied because of the presence of the Lord and we want to thank you now in advance for what you're about to do none of me and all of you shall go forward is our prayer in the name of Jesus, we pray. You agree with that? Say amen. amen. Somebody give God a praise in the house of God. Put those holy hands together. Give the devil a headache. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Be seated in the presence of God. Thank God for, for all who are here tonight. I want to get right off into the word of God. My time begins right now. Hallelujah. Turn with me, if you would, to 1 John's chapter, 1 John's cap, chapter 5, 
beginning at verse 4, there's a word from the Lord tonight that I want to share with us in a mighty way. 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5 will be the foundation of what I'm going to say tonight. And um, praise God, God has just uh, given me the assignment, I believe, to preach faith. But in the process, we're going to deal with uh, some finances as well. Can you say man? I don't know about you, praise God. The, the Bible says in, in Ecclesiastes, praise God, chapter 10, verse 19, man, money answers all things, but not everything. Are y'all here with me? And uh, some of our greatest problems come because of a lack of money. Can you say amen? And I believe tonight God's going to bring you into a position and place where you can believe God for whatever you need. Can you say amen? You know, I understand that Pastor Darius Creighton ministered last night, and that's a powerful man of God. He came to our church and just blessed us in such a mighty way. Our church has never been the same. Give God praise, Mount Pleasant Word Church International. And we, 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 there was a deposit left that I believe is still residing and remaining in a mighty way. First John chapter 5, the beginning at verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Now, that's, that seems like a very simple verse, but it's very powerful because we understand something here that, that if I have the faith that God says I, that I can have, then I'm in a position, praise God, where I can overcome everything in this world. The Bible lets me know, and I've come to the realization that I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. And because I'm not of it, it has no power over me. And the Bible comes back and say in verse 5, praise God in a powerful way, praise God to let us know who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you are a world overcomer. Can you say amen? You may not feel like it. You may not look like it sometime, but you are. Can you say amen? And I want to talk from the faith, from the, from the subject tonight, praise God, the faith that wins. The faith that wins. I don't know about you, but I believe God intended for us to win every time. Yes. Not, not, not just one time, but every time. God has ordained for us to come out on top. Can y'all say amen? And as I look at this word, I'm looking at it from the premise that if we're going to have faith in God that wins, there are some things we should understand. You, got, you have to understand it, praise God. You have to come to a place where there's a revelation of what God has created you to be, praise God. And so as I look at this word, praise God, it, it comes at the bases and at the heels of a conference we had in our ministry where your pastor had ministered to us so powerfully, praise God, concerning, praise God, our, our faith, praise God, prayer, prophetic believers meeting. And at the, in that particular meeting, praise God, we heard some things that encourage us to become stronger than we've ever become before. Can you say amen? Faith is the medium of exchange. In other words, if I'm going to have something from God, I got to have some faith. If you go to Walmart, you got to have some money. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't go in them Walmart and get a, a buggy load of groceries and then get up to the check stand and say, praise the Lord. No, you're going to have to exchange, uh, praise God, some money for the groceries that you purchase. Can you say Amen. And if you and I are going to receive from God, there has to be some faith involved. Can you say amen? And I want you to know, praise God, I've been, I've been, I've been looking at this thing for several years now. And I recognize that if I have faith in God, that everything I need, everything I desire will come to me. Glory to God. And I'm believing for some things that will astound some of you because I just, just know in my heart there's no limit to what God can do. Can you say amen? Understanding that, that faith is a medium of exchange, for without faith or belief or trust in reliance on God, there is no receiving from God. That's one reason why the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it's a powerful verse, and, and, and he tells us it's impossible to please him without faith, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can you say amen? And when we look at that word diligent, it means that there, are, there is some things and there are some things that you have to do in order to stay in the place of faith that God has ordained for you to be. Amen. And that simply means 
you have to be in a position in place where you have to know, praise God, that you put forth every effort, that every step you make is a step of faith. Can you say amen? And, and the Bible says over there in, in uh, Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, that whatsoever is done does not of faith is sin. I, I, I know that's pretty strong, but, but you and I have to understand that we live, praise God, every day walking and living according to what God has said. Can you say amen? And so understanding that in a powerful way, everything you receive from God, it, there has to be an exchange of faith. Somebody say an exchange, exchange. Of, faith. of faith. See, we were saved by faith. Can you say amen? The Bible talks about it in Romans chapter 10 in verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that, that, that God have raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. When you search that word saved, it means you'll be made whole and be made sound, be made complete. Praise God. You'll be made, praise God, in a place of being delivered, a place of prosperity, a place of health, a place of rest, a place, praise God, where, where, where you can be re rescued from whatever the enemy has brought into your life. And I don't care where you are now, but somebody ought to shout, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. You might not have enough money, but you're coming out. You might, you might have something happening to your body, but you're coming out. I'm, I'm telling you, I feel like preaching up in here. And you, you might, praise God, have some problems in your relationship, but you got to say, this thing got to change. You might have some problems with your children, but God is able to break a chain. Somebody to give God praise in this house. And so when I look at this word, he said, thou shalt be saved. And the way you were saved is the same way you received from Jesus. Hallelujah is by faith, by faith. Everybody said by faith. By faith. I'm going to preach till I get drunk, praise God. <laughs> Y'all can just look at me strange if you want to, praise God. But when I look at this, everything we receive is by faith. We are to pray in faith, praise God. The Bible talks about it in Mark's gospel, chapter 11 and verse 24, praise God. Therefore, whatsoever thing you desire when you, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Somebody ought to start shouting right now because you've been believing. And that means there's some stuff that's happening in your life right now. Can I preach up in here? I'm not in a Presbyterian church tonight. I'm in a good church, a hot church. I like to be where the Holy Ghost is. And not only do you, you pray in faith, but we are healed through and by faith. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us in a powerful way in James Gospel, chapter 5, and beginning at verse 13. I want to give you a few verses here. Is, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. <laughs> hey amen. See, you have to learn how to pray when you're going through. Can you say amen? And sometimes it's good to have a partner that knows how to pray because when you hurting so bad, you need somebody to pray for you. You need somebody to pray with you. Can you say amen? But he goes on to say, if any is merry among you, let him sing psalms. Praise God. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Praise God, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Can you say amen? And listen, we got to get to the place to recognize that you're not just a human being. You are human in you are, you are, you are a being in humans that have been anointed by God. Oh, y'all better catch that. Uh, you, well, I'm just a man. I'm just a no, no, you more than that. You've been born of heaven. And because you've been born of heaven, heaven is living on the inside of you. And because heaven is living on the inside of you, every time you open your mouth, you're releasing heaven's power. Somebody give God praise right there. And so when I look at this word, I'm talking about the spirit of faith. Can I preach in here a little bit? Praise God. Not only that, but we're told to walk by faith. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 7, he says, praise God, we walk by faith and not by sight. I, I, I'm trying to hurry because I just got a few minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not in Uganda, Africa, and I'm not going to make y'all stay for two hours. But I want you to understand that when you walk by faith, praise God, it means you answer everything in earth according to what heaven says. Yeah. Oh, y'all oh, y'all didn't get that. Did you get it? Did you get it? Praise God, when you don't have money, heaven is rich. Yeah. And, and, and that's your homeland. <laughs> and because it's your homeland, you begin to call in the earth the way it is in heaven. Jesus said it this way, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Somebody said, call it, call it. I looked at that word, call it. It means summons it. Sometimes you ought to summons your money. 
you, you know, when you, get a, when, you, when you get a summon from the government to go and the, the, the jewelry duty, that means they've summoned you to come and show up. You ought to summon your money to come to you. Yeah. You ought to summon your body to be here. Y'all y- 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 still here? Glory to God. And when I look at this word, praise God, we are to live by faith. Now, we got four scriptures. I'm not going to quote them all, but I just want to give you one of them. Praise God. That we are told to live by faith. When we look at Romans chapter 1 and verse 17, it says, For herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For as it is written, the just shall live by faith. In other words, you and I come into a place, praise God, we're living by faith. And every time you begin to walk by faith, you get stronger and stronger. How many of you know that God has done so much in our lives that when we look around, we know when we confront a mountain, God already has given us the power to overcome it. There's too many mountains that I've gone over to think that God's not going to take care of this one. Oh, oh y'all, 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 you got to understand. See, see, I, I've been out here a while. I've been, I've been pastoring, I mean, there's two, three churches in all, but at Mount Pleasant for 40 years coming up in April. And the thing about it is, I know what it is to go through some hard times. When the, when the Bible said through many dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. That's an old hymn. I've come through some stuff. And when God brought you through that, he'll take you through this. Somebody give God praise. I tell them all the time, don't be satisfied with just anything in your life that's not like God. Because if it's sickness, drive it out. If it's a financial problem, get into a place, praise God, where you recognize the money's got to come. Somebody give God praise. Therefore, as we consider having faith in God, it is a very necessary commodity. (laughs) Because at one time or another, we will face or confront challenging circumstances. And believe me, when they come, it is not in your own strength that you will overcome them. Can you say amen? I don't know who you are. I don't care what you have. I don't care how much money. I don't care how how beautiful you think you are, how handsome you think you are. Praise God. I know you think you're the cat's meow and all of that. But I'm going to tell you something. You're going to come to a place you're going to need God. I don't care what it is, there's something you cannot deal with that only God can deal with. Every time you look in the mirror and every now and then you see another wrinkle, you can't do nothing about that. It's going to take God to sustain you. Can you say amen? And I don't know about you, I'm believing God. I got to hurry. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting low. You got to understand something here that when you begin to walk with God, you got to know, praise God, that God is able to sustain you even when it looks like it's all over. Uh, you, you got to know that he said, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. But you have a responsibility. I'll say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Praise God. And because he is, praise God, that all of that between Psalms 1, uh, 91, 1 and 2, and verse 16, praise God, God says, I'll do it for you. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? And so I want you to know in a powerful way, trouble is going to come. Trouble's going to come, but, but trouble does not have to overcome. On, I learned that years ago, praise God, uh, praise God, from Creflo Dollar, praise God. I'm, trouble might come, but I learned how to trouble my trouble. On, oh, y'all don't remember some of those things. I know how to trouble my trouble. I get to a place where, praise God, I can believe God, and when trouble come, I laugh at it. Hallelujah to Jesus. And the Bible said trouble will come. For in Psalms 34 and 19, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Not some of them, but how many? All of them. Jesus said in John 16 and verse 33, praise God. And it's powerful, praise God. He said, these things have I spoken unto you. They didn't mean you might have peace. What Jesus said will give you peace. Huh? He gave Peter one word and he just walked on the water. Praise God. All you have to do is believe what he said. Can you say amen? amen. You might have peace, but in the world you should have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Glory to God. And because he's overcome it, praise God, his overcoming the world was given to me. It was, it was given to me, praise God, because when he did it, I was in him. Oh, y'all, y'all. See, that's one reason why the devil don't have a right to keep you sick, to keep you down. Because when Jesus did what he did, you and I was in him. And because we were in him, he did it for us. 
And because he did it for us, praise God, I'm rich before I became rich. I was living in a, a garage apartment and I was preaching prosperity, praise God. I, praise God, I was driving a, a hoopty car, but I was still preaching prosperity, but I'm not driving one now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. And so trouble will come, yes? You will be confronted, and you will confront or be challenged with seemingly impossible circumstances. But you have access to faith that wins. And what I want to share with you in this word is that if you are going to have faith that wins, there are some things you must understand and become proficient in. Can you say amen? Four things. I'm going to drop it in your spirit, and uh, I'm going to get out of here. Glory to God. Go get me a little bit of rest. Amen. And get ready to preach some more. Amen. You see, you must understand, number one, what faith is and how to release it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. You, you've been around Pastor Creighton, praise God. You know all of this. But you must understand also how to pray in faith. Thirdly, you must understand the connection between faith and the prophetic word of God. Huh. And then you must understand in a powerful way the believer's life of faith. Can you say amen? And when you understand those things, praise God, your life becomes, praise God, easy. Summertime, our lives, and let me, before I start to give you this first point, sometimes our lives are hard because we're trying to live it. We're trying to do it. We're trying to be it. But, but the Bible says something powerful in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 that we're co-laborers together with God. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to teach a little bit up in here. We're co-laborers together with God. God is working with us and we're working with God. It's not all of us. It's not all of God. God you know, it's, it's like the man that said one time, he said, this, said, man, you have a beautiful garden. He said, and, and, and boy, God has really blessed you. He said, yeah, God blessed me, but I was the one that doing the work in the garden. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you have to get to the place to recognize it's not hard when you die to yourself. On, I, don't make me long. Come don't on. look at me like that. <laughs> when you die to yourself, it becomes easy because now you're depending on him. You're trusting him. You're walking with him. Are you here with me? And you get into a place, praise God, where you recognize when you become, uh, become a person that you know that I can't do it without him. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can you say amen? And when you get to that particular place, you're going to understand what it is. Number one, you must understand what faith is and how to release it. Can you say amen? See, when you look at these verses, I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. I'm going to work with this in this first point, and I want you to catch it very quickly because i got to move. In Hebrews 11 and verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. And then it goes on to say, through faith we understand, and praise God, that the elders obtained a good report. But in verse 3, it says, through faith, praise God, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. Can you say amen? When I look at this particular, the word, praise God, the scripture reveals faith is the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, you can see it in verse 3 in such a clear way when it says, through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. Can you say amen? In other words, you and I must understand that when I have a word from God, I have what God has said about my situation, and I can use that word not only to, to frame my life, but to build my life. Oh, you got to come to a place to know that, that, that you're living where you are now because of what you said the other day. And you and I have to get to the place to recognize that, that just like God framed the world with his words, you can frame your life by the word of God, that God is speaking to you, that God is important. Can, can I teach up in here? That God is important to you. And when God, uh, praise God, begin to give you that word and you begin to frame your life, you come into a place, praise God, that whatever is not there, just like a person builds a house and they use the, the build the foundation and they build, they put the, the block and they, they put the flooring and they, and they begin to put the walls up and they put the roof on. Praise God. The, 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 they do those things, praise God, in succession to each other. And you, you get to the place where it, as God revealed to you what he wants to do with your life, you begin to say it and God begin to do it. 
You build it, you build it, you build it. That word, that word that when it says the word of God is where faith comes from, uh, God, God, God framed the worlds with it. Can you say man? Yeah. The worlds, uh, that word worlds, uh, when you look at it, it means the eons, the ages. In other words, we're living in an age now and God has given us a word for our age that will frame where we are. If you, if you don't understand what I'm saying, you got to understand God framed the, the world with his words. And because he framed it, that word frame also means he fashioned it. He formed it with his word. Every time you speak words, you're doing something in the spirit. Can you say amen? And words of faith. And when you speak in words of faith, praise God, you're framing something in your life. Can you say amen? There is a powerful verse, and, and, and it, it comes to me often, praise God, when it comes about preaching about faith. And it's over in Proverbs chapter 24 in the Amplified Translation. And I want you to catch this, praise God, and then I got I to gotta really hurry. In Proverbs chapter 24, and uh, beginning at verse 3 in the Amplified Translation, listen closely what it says in the Amplified. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house uh, or life our home, our family built. Wisdom comes from the word of God. Wisdom comes from, from, from an accumulation of knowledge or facts, which when you begin to know how to use them, it becomes wisdom. And when you have wisdom and you begin to speak the word of God, that wisdom that you begin to speak, it begins to build things in your life. Just like God framed the earth, you frame your life. You frame, praise God, in a powerful way, your house, your, your life, your home, your family. We can say your finances, your health and your body. Come on, somebody. You frame it with the words of your mouth, praise God. And he goes on to say you're built by, by, by understanding it is established from us uh, on a sound and good foundation. That when it's framed by the word of God, it will stand. Can you say amen? God framed the worlds with his words. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by, by the word of God. And the Bible teaches us in Genesis chapter 1 and it, that, that the, when, when we read it, praise God, and everybody know it, praise God, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. And light came into existence. In verse 6, God said, let the firmaments above be separated from the firmaments, firmaments beneath. And it happened, praise God. What was he doing? He was framing the world, world with his words. And when you begin to get God's word in your heart in abundance, which have been born again by the Spirit of God, and you begin to speak that word out of a heart that's been born again, that thing, the same thing that God did, you'll do. When God did what he did, he did it because he saw it already in his heart. He had it in his heart. He had the picture in his heart. He had the vision in his heart. And God wrapped words around it. And when he spoke it, it came into existence. When you see yourself healed, you'll be healed. When you see yourself prosperous, you'll be prosperous. When you see yourself delivered, you'll be delivered. You'll stop saying, praise God, I'm going to be delivered. No, you are delivered. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when I look at this word, praise God, you and I must understand the word is the substance or basis or foundation of what you need from God. It's the substance of things. Can you say man? It is your faith, a word that is substance and basis and foundation of your undesirable circumstances changing. <laughs> you remember that, that, that you answer everything in the earth with what heaven is saying. And the word is what heaven is saying. Can you say man? In other words, when I get a word from heaven, praise God, you see, the word came from heaven, and because the word came from heaven, when I begin to speak heaven out of my mouth, heaven comes to the earth, and heaven and earth comes together. And you and I have to understand in a powerful way that, that, that God has given us the word so that faith can come to be the substance of the change, the situation that we're confronting. What you have to understand is that it was faith that created the world. And because faith created the world, when the world is not in order, you can bring it in order with your word. Uh, are y'all here with me? You can bring it in order with your words. In other words, your words, praise God, bring, makes, make, cause things in the earth to, come, to become like heaven. 
And you and I, praise God, need to realize in a powerful way that the undesirable uh, circumstances, now, praise God, in our lives can be changed by the word because the, the circumstances in the earth which was created, the earth itself was created by faith. It has to change by faith because faith created it. And so when I look at this word, the word of, of, of faith is not only substance, but it's also, praise God, it's hope. It's where hope is coming from. Have you ever noticed that when you get a word from God, it paints a picture? Yes, sir. Huh? Well, when I talked about having money, you can see, your, you can see yourself with money. Can you say amen? In other words, when you have hope, you have vision. But vision really comes from the word of God. Yes, sir. And faith is the, or the word is the substance of what you see that you don't see with your eyes, but you see it in your heart. Anybody here? And you got to get to the place where you recognize, praise God, when, you, when, when the, the Bible says in the Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the things in vision, the things that you see that you don't see with your eyes. Hope is the thing that you have in your imagination, that Holy Ghost imagination that God wants to do for you. Can you say amen? That's one reason why I, I really love the scripture, but that says unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. That word think that when you search it out, it, 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 praise God, what you can imagine. See, that's one reason. If you can't imagine yourself living better than you live now, you'll never live better. If you can't imagine yourself having the house that would house you, not only your family, but your relatives when they come to visit you, you would never have it. But if you can imagine it, you can have it. Yeah. So, some of you have a hard time with prophesying, but many times God will deal with your imagination and you have to let God help you wrap words around what you see in your heart and begin to prophesy. Oh, God, I, I, I got to go. I got to go. Gotta go. And so when I look at this, praise God, I want you to understand in a mighty way. God, the, the word is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. Can you say amen? In other words, the word of God revealed to you what God has already provided. He's already provided. You don't see it, but he's provided it. And the word lets you know. You know, years ago they used to have the TV guide. Now they don't have it. <laughs> and the TV guide showed you what was playing on TV. And see, the word of God is, is God's TV guide to show you what heaven has provided for you. Oh, somebody's going to get this. And, and when, you, when, you, when you see what heaven has provided for you, praise God, you know the word is what you need in order to, to, to check it out, in order to receive it. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us in a powerful way uh, over in Isaiah 55 and verse 11, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. That word, praise God, will always come to pass. Can you say amen? And because that word will always come to pass, you and I must realize in a powerful way, praise God, that when I get his word, I have the substance of the thing that I need that will change the situation in my life. I have a vision of me coming into a better place than I've ever been before. My body's being healed. My finances lining up with God so I can have more than enough so I can give away what God wants me to give away. I can become into a place to know that not only that, but what I could even imagine God has already provided. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Secondly, I want you to understand how to pray in faith. You got to know how to pray in faith. Can you say amen? amen? You see, praying in faith requires praying according to the word. I don't care how much you fall in the floor and cry and kick. If you don't do it according to the word, it's not going to work. Now, come on now. I don't care how much you moan and groan. If it's not in the spirit, you don't get nothing. Can y'all say Amen. I don't care how much you cry and just want God to feel sorry for you. That's not going to get what you need. You got to have some word. It's like I heard my brother say one time, he said, if you don't know the word, get the Bible, open it up, and just pray it right out of the Bible. Are y'all here with me? Just pray it right out of the Bible because it's a word, and it will work, and it will accomplish that what you please. But you got to know, praise God, you see, praying in faith requires praying according to the word. Can you say amen? Jesus taught this, this doing his earthly ministry. In John's gospel, chapter 14 and verse 12, Jesus said this, and most people don't believe it, but I believe it. 
and aspiring to do just that. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. <laughs> and greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. He, he made, made the observation, I'm going to the Father because I'm going to send the Holy Ghost back. Because Jesus did what he did because he was anointed of God with the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? And for the Bible says Jesus declared at the beginning of his ministry in, in Luke's gospel chapter 4 and, and beginning at verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jubilee has come. I, I, I don't have to wait for, for some day, or so, but every day is jubilee. Jesus has already died and was buried and rose from the grave. And so everything that needs to come back to me has got to come. Everything that's, that's in debt has got to be released. Can I preach up in here? You got to get to the place. You're not waiting on Jubilee to come. They said, well, this is the year of Jubilee. It's been Jubilee ever since he rose from the grave. Oh, y'all better, y'all better. You might well come on because I'm out there now, praise God. <laughs> And you got to know, praise God, because we are living in Jubilee, praise God. There's some stuff God's going to do in your life as you begin to believe him by faith. And you got to know in your heart, praise God, because Jubilee has come, praise God, that there's some stuff God going to release. I wish I had time to preach up in here. You, you got to get to the place. There's some stuff the devil took when you was a child, but God's going to give it back. That, that's some stuff that left you that should have stayed in you. I'm not talking about old people now. And some people, they, God took them out of your life. Praise God. But God going to give you something better. better. Somebody said better better. better, better. And you and I have to get to a place in the Lord, praise God, where we recognize, praise God, that Jesus has been anointed, praise God. And you and I, we come into a place because of that same anointing, we know how to pray. <laughs> he goes on to say in John's gospel, chapter 14 and verse 13, uh, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I'll give it you. Hallelujah. That the father might be glorified in the son. Uh, didn't he say, and then, then he comes back and said, and then he says, not only will I give it to you, but, 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 but if, if you ask it, praise God, anything in my name, I'll do it. In other words, one translation says, if you ask anything in my name, if I don't have it, I'll become Jehovah Elohim and create it. Whoa. Oh, God. Oh, y'all. We're talking about creative miracles. I, I, listen, y'all better get me out of here. I, I, I done got caught up. It's a creative miracle. You said, well, I don't know how to do that. The doctor said it will never leave. But the devil does a liar and Jesus is the Messiah. And what they don't know, God knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just believe you've had the last sick day of your life. I declare it in Jesus' name. You've had the last broke day in your life. I declare it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better open your spirit, praise God, and receive it. I said you better. See, y'all sitting there just looking. You better open your spirit. Every time you open your mouth, the spirit or your wound of the spirit, it opens up and God says yes. Oh, glory. And so we see here in a powerful way, you got to, you got to know you pray by faith. Can you say amen? Over in John's gospel, chapter 15, in verse 4. How many, how many minutes I got left? Man, <laughs> Glory to God. I'm trying to be obedient, brother. Praise God. But in John's Gospel, chapter 15, in verse 4, he said, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in me. No more can you except, except you abide in me. And then he comes back in verse, in verse 5 and says, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same, bring forth much fruit. Hallelujah. You can just put a, put, a, put, a, put a tag on it. Whatever you need, you can, it'll come forth because you're abiding. And then he comes back in verse 6 and he says it this way. If a man abide not in me, praise God, he's cast forth as a branch and he's withered. Praise God. And men gathered them together. But he comes back in verse 7. That's my verse, uh, my brother. That's my verse. He said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will. Hallelujah. It shall be done. I tell y'all, there have been times, hey, let me just calm down. <laughs> there have been times, I said, Lord, I know I'm abiding in you. 
but I, and you know what I need for Uganda, Africa. And God, I know you, and that's your idea. It wasn't mine. I didn't want to go to Africa. I didn't want to go to Albania, but I went because you told me to go. And after I've gone, and after I've done this, God, now God, I, I, I know I'm in you. And so God, you know what I need. And I'm telling you, God, every time. He touched men's heart like, like your pastors, praise God, and others, praise God. And here come the money, praise God. And I don't ever put pressure on nobody for nothing because God said it, God did it. God told me, oh, come on, help me, Jesus. God told me years ago, he said, if you'll preach the gospel, you leave Wolverine in two. I said, I know I'm going to preach the gospel. And I said, I came and I asked Mount Pleasant, I said, look, y'all just give me a vote of confirmation. Because we were traditional as any, anything you've ever seen. Just give me a vote. They said, don't come. Don't come to pastor. I said, I told you before I, we voted that I'm coming. And you don't have to give me nothing because I had a word from God. Don't tell me about faith if you've never been out there. Huh? How you, you, you have to, see, it takes faith to build this. It took faith to come from over to that other church and to come over here. And then people that you thought was going to be with you forever, they just they wave you bye-bye. Yeah. And so when I look at this word, praise God, you got to know, praise God, you got to know how to pray in faith. When praying in faith are the word you are calling into existence what's already provided. Already, I preached a little message this morning in noonday Bible study that, that let them know what you need is already provided. Just to encourage you that you can believe for it. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all remember, wave your hand, those who have been in the Bible study this morning. That's back there. And, and the thing it is, it's already provided, so all you have to do is receive it. You don't get nothing from God. You just receive. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And he did it a long time ago, according as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world. God knew that a boy that would be born in Fogville, Alabama, on Lake Hunt Mountain, rolling car tires as toys, that one day he would raise him up and let him preach the gospel all over the world. And I'm living in a dream right now. But it's, uh, it's already provided, Shatoya. It's already provided. Those five sharps are already provided. You better hear me. You better hear me. God's waiting on you. You're not waiting on God. Uh, you you got to get to a place that's already provided. Yeah, some of us, and listen, this is a word for some people. You got to break out of the place of complacency. I don't care if you are 55. You got to break out some places of complacency because God wants to do a quick work in your life. God wants to redeem the time in your life. God, help me. Help me. And, and you got to know, praise God, you got to stop just going through the mundane you know, routine of life and know that God's got some fresh thing to do in your life. Somebody said, do it, God. I remember Dale come to our church and he preached one time. He was preaching real good. Everybody's excited. Everybody laughing. He said, won't he do it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's already provided it. The Bible says in, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, praise God, according to his divine power, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who have called us to glory and virtue. Can you say Amen. In other words, praise God, everything pertains to life and godliness. In other words, everything materially, everything spiritually, God's already provided it. And you and I have to get to the place by faith, we begin to step out and God will begin to activate it. Can you say amen? And then praying in faith requires praying out of and in right position with God. Can you say amen? I don't have the time to give all of this like I, I had in my heart to give it. <coughs> Excuse me. But I believe the right position with God is being in right relationship with him. Did y'all catch that? In other words, there is a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with God. Remember the scripture in John 15 and verse 7 when he says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. That comes out of right relationship with God. 
There, there, is, there, there is a powerful illustration of what it is to have a right relationship with God in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 1 in verses 6 through 12 when, 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 when Solomon, praise God, became, praise God, God's man. Can you say amen? Let me just refer to it and move on. I don't have just time to read all of the, the verses, but I want you to understand Solomon, praise God, he had a heart for God and, 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 and he recognized he was uh, up against a great task. And, and the Bible says that Solomon, Solomon brought a thousand sheep, praise God, to, for a burnt offering. He gave a sacrifice to God. And, and after giving a sacrifice to God, the Bible says in a powerful way, praise God, that God appeared to him, praise God, the, in the, that night, praise God. And God began to ask him, just, just ask me for whatever you want. And see, when the, your heart is right with God, you don't hold back in any area of your life. You give it all to him. Can you say amen? And, and after he had given this sacrifice, official offering. Praise God. God. God said, you just ask what you will. And, and he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for anything. But the Bible said that he asked, praise God, that God would give him wisdom to lead the people because they were a great people. Can you say amen? And the Bible said because his heart was humble. And when you tie this, uh, this, these verses and, and chapter three together, praise God, because he was humble and he wanted to, to, to serve God. You praise God. God says, because you didn't ask for riches. You didn't ask for honor. You didn't ask for all of these other things. He said, I'm going to give you the wisdom that you need, but I'm also going to give you riches and honor. I'm going to give you, but why? Why? Because his heart was right. I double dog, deputy dog, dare some of you. <laughs> Glory to God. To come to a place where you get your heart right with God. Huh? Well, you come to a place where you begin to seek the Lord with all your heart and you begin to come into a place you put God first and you watch him begin to move in your life. God wants to give you more than you could ever imagine, but he, wants, he don't want you to leave God. He wants you to stay with him. Somebody give God praise. Out of right relationship, God will run you over. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I believe praying out of the right position with him simply means you've heard what he has done for others and that you know he'll do it for you. Can you say amen? There's some things I don't desire. I really don't. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I, when it comes to stuff, praise God, I, I have a, I'm driving even today, uh, a, a 2005, praise God. Uh, uh, they, 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 I call it my bus, praise God. But, but a man gave it to me. I preached in, in Florida, and he got this. He said, I got a vehicle I want to give you. He said, and I said, well, praise the Lord. I thought it was a hoopty car, you know, or something. And I went out there, man, the thing was shining. He said, I done put, yeah, we put all new stuff on it. I put uh, good tires on it. I, I put a new radio. I put, I put everything. And he said, I, the Lord told me to give it to you. I said, well, obey the Lord. <laughs> I did. I said, obey the Lord. I said, but let's make it legitimate. I want to give you a dollar so that you can say you sold it to me for a dollar. And I gave him a dollar and I gave, he gave him a bill of sale and then, he you, and then he gave me the dollar back. In other words, he wanted it to be a seed in my life. Yeah. And I, I, like I said, all I did was just preach. And, and, and the same man, praise God, he said, God told me to hook up with you. And whatever, every, 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 just often he sent offerings to me personally. Go over to God just to bless me. Oh, y'all ain't going to pray with me. I, did, I didn't tell nobody to do that. See, when people try to make you broke and people try to keep you down, they can't do nothing with you when God is for you. You got to get to the place to know, praise God. God's got you and he got you wrapped up. And because God has did it for others, he'll do it for you. That was a man by the name of Jairus. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. That was a man by the name of Jairus, praise God, that he went to Jesus. And, and he, Jairus, praise God, when you begin to look at his background, he was a ruler in the synagogue. And, but his daughter uh, had fallen, uh, was sick, praise God. In fact, his daughter had died. And he went to Jesus and he fell down at Jesus' feet. In other words, he gave it all up. Yep. If you want to prosper, praise God, give it up for Jesus. If you sting you, God can't get it to you. Come on. Come on. Y'all don't say that word in you. If you're stingy, praise God. <laughs> Every time you walk, somebody, you be screeching like a, like a, like a, a, a tire that needs oil. Praise God. You got to, if you're stingy, God can't get it to you. See, and, and, and well, I'm saving this for a rainy day. It's going to rain, brother. It's going to rain. It's gonna rain, but 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 when you when you when you come down off of your high horse, I gotta I gotta go, God. 
Help me. I, come down off your high horse. And when you come to a place, listen, and when you come down to the place, it's not about your position. It's not about your family. It's not about what they say, he says, she said. You better say that slow. Amen. And you you got to come to a place to recognize when you get there, it's what God says. And that's when God's going to come through for you. Just like he came through for Jairus, praise God. And when, they, when it was, when this woman with the issue of blood is the same kind of woman, praise God. This woman, praise God, was having a problem with a blood, uh, blood issue. And the Bible said she, she heard that Jesus was there. And see, when you hear about Jesus, don't just hear, hear to do. Yes, sir. Huh? Hear to do. In other words, whatever he tells you, do it. And when you're here to do, you come into a place, praise God, where, where, where this woman with the issue of blood, she heard that Jesus was near. And because she heard that he was near, she said within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she did what she said. Yeah. She heard it. She said it. She did it. And she received it. Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something, that's a good remedy, that's a good, a good, praise God, thing to keep in your heart. That when you heard what he said and he told you what to do, praise God, do it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And so when I look at this word, as I guess I move towards a close, you got to understand, praise God, that praying out of the right position with him simply means you've heard what he has, has done. And, and praise God, you know he'll do it for you. Thirdly, very quickly, you must understand the connection between faith and the prophetic word of God. Can you say amen? Now, when you begin to understand the, this, this connection, praise God, you, you understand something that the word itself is prophetic. Can you say man? When it says it's prophetic, it means it has a future date to be fulfilled. And let me say this, and I don't have time to fare it all out, but I, I grant you, I could teach you about an hour of letting you understand, praise God, that prophetic word has a lot to do with your faith. Because when, when you understand, notice if you would, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, he says it this way. And I want you to catch this one in your spirit. And I'm going to say a few things here, a few things on the last one, and I'm, I'm going to get out of here. But in 2 Peter, praise God, chapter 1 and beginning at verse 19, Peter gives us a, an idea of the prophetic word. Can you say amen? amen? He tells us, praise God, in verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. For until you do well to take heed as unto a light, now watch this now, that shineth in what kind of place? A dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. When you get a word, as you heard me say earlier, it paints a picture. And you can see the picture, but when you begin to speak the word, you don't see it all at once. But when you begin to speak the word, the more you speak the word, the clearer it becomes. The, the more you speak the word, praise God, that word that you have, which is a prophetic word, the more you believe what you believe. And when you believe what you believe, praise God, notice the Amplified translation. It says it this way, and you'll catch it in, in a mighty way, praise God. In the Amplified, it says, and we have a prophetic word made firm and still. You will do well to pay close attention. What kind of attention? Close. close attention to it as a lamp shining in a dismal, squalid, and dark place. That word squalid means a foul place. That where you're in now may be foul, but God's getting ready to change it. Where you are now may be in a place of light, but God's getting ready to change it. Where you are now, your body might be ailing you, but God's getting ready to change it. Come on, and, and, and as you get that prophetic word from God that Jesus said in, in 1 Peter 2, 24, his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Yes, sir. Can somebody shout, I'm healed. I'm healed. Come on, say it, I'm healed. I'm healed. And as you say it, praise God, the power of God is coming upon you and you are healed now. And begin to say, God, I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my deliverance. And, and you can begin, as you say it, praise God, it becomes more real every time you say it. Yes. Glory to God. 
I said, glory to God. And so when I look at this word, he goes on to say in the amplified translation of that 19th verse, praise God, place until the day breaks through and the gloom and the morning star rises, comes into being in your heart. In other words, the more you confess that word, the more you stand on that word, it becomes clearer and clearer. They had an old song years ago, there's a bright side somewhere. You don't see it right now, but the more you believe it, praise God, the more it begins to reveal itself to you. Can you say amen? amen. As I move towards a close today, I want you to know that when you begin to speak the prophetic word, that word has a time of fulfillment. Can you say amen? Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1, it says it this way. I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. Because he said a whole lot of stuff. Uh, praise God. And most of it was negative in chapter 1. Hallelujah. And the, verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision or write the word and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Your, your healing is for an appointed time. Your prosperity is for an appointed time. When I was preaching prosperity, living in that garage apartment, it was for an appointed time. Time. Oh, yo, 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 you you got to get to where you are now is not where you're going to end up. And notice he goes on to say in a powerful way, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. <coughs> Excuse me. It shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, do what? Wait for it. Wait for it. Why? Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Every time I read that, Everything I need, when I begin to stand on that word, I begin to speak that word, I know it's coming to me. Yeah. And it's not going to tarry. Amen. No matter what it looks like, sounds like, feels like, it's coming to me, praise God. Amen. And all I have to do is wait, praise God, and wait in faith. Amen. And my faith is pulling it out of the supernatural into the natural. Yes, sir. You got to get to the place to know in the supernatural, when you get past 184,000 miles per second, praise God, it becomes invisible. And that's what a spirit is. Yeah. And when it becomes, because it's invisible, praise God, when you begin to believe God, the word is supernatural. And when you speak that supernatural word, that word goes up into the spirit and begin to pull it out to the material. And after a while, praise God, you begin to see it in your spirit and you get to a place, praise God, what you saw in the spirit gets in your hand. That car might be on the car parking lot now, but praise God, on the, on the car lot now. But when you see it and you begin to speak it, it come, becomes yours. Why? It's because, praise God, you pulled it out. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then he goes on to say in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, praise God, he, the soul that is lifted is not upright in him, huh? for the just shall live by his faith. Huh? You can't live by Darius' faith. Can't live by Brother Walter's faith. Can't live by Darius' little faith. But you can't live by Pastor Orr's faith. But when we preach faith, you got to get it. And you live by your faith. But, 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 but it, it is your maintaining your faith in the prophetic word that brings it to pass. Can you say amen? amen. And when you have a prophetic word from God, 1 Timothy 1 and 18 says, you use that word and war a good fight. Didn't he say? War a good fight. And when you war in a good fight according to the word of God, you're professing and declaring. And praise God. And every time you do, praise God, it's pulling it to you. Can you say Amen. amen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14, praise God, we have a great high priest that had passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Hold fast your profession of faith. Didn't he say it? And then he said, we have, we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points was tempted like as we are yet without sin. And let us therefore come boldly. Not, not timidly, but boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Didn't he say it? Yeah. Praise God. And therefore, praise God, when you're confessing that word, you're coming into a place and like Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23, when he says, hold fast your profession of faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised it. Can y'all say amen? Yeah. You must remember when you are standing on the word of God and warring that warfare with the word. Matthew 24 and 35 says, heaven and earth might pass away, but my word will not pass away. I'm talking about a sure thing. 
I, I'm not talking about a hit and a miss. I'm talking about a sure thing. And that's one reason why I, I, I believe with all my heart, God never, I, I'm never like losing. When I played sports, praise God, now, I wasn't saved and don't think bad about me. But, but praise God, when I played football, and I, I'd knock you down, I'd bite you, praise God, kick you, I'd do everything. And they just said, don't go over that way, that boy crazy. Because I wanted to win. Somebody said, well, it's not, how, how, well, not whether you win or lose, how you play the game. No, I'm winning. I'm winning. And the thing it is, God, did, God didn't raise us up to be a failure. God didn't, uh, listen, y'all. He didn't raise us up to be a failure. He raised every one of us up and he filled us with his precious Holy Ghost so that we could be a, a victor, a victorious person in Christ. We can be an overcomer. We're living beneath our privileges. But we got to get it right. Somebody said, get it right, get it right. In closing today, let me just say this. And I got to go. I got to go. I got more I can give you. But fourthly, you must understand the believer's life, uh, our life is a life of faith. Jesus said it during his earthly ministry in John's gospel, chapter 6 and verse 26. When Jesus said, praise God, when they asked him, what must we do then in order to accomplish the task that you have before us? And Jesus told them in verse 28, then said they unto him, what should we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him who have sent you. Your, your work and my work is to believe. It's to believe. I don't care what we come up against. It's to know what God said about it and believe what he said. Can you say amen? And when you and I believe uh, in Hebrews chapter, chapter, uh, in Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 1, praise God, he tells us when you believe, it involves holding his promises before you. When you believe, when, you got, when you're on the promise of God, every promise will come, come to pass. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, praise, all the promises of God are yes, and in him they are amen. Can you say amen? The believer's life of faith involves hearing with the intent to do it. Can you say amen? I'm, I'm, I'm closing here. And with the intent to do it, the Bible says in, in Hebrews 4 and verse 2 that many of them failed to go into the promised land because they didn't mix faith with the word that they had heard. When, listen, when you're sitting there like you are now and you're hearing this word and you're mixing faith with it, God, I'm, I want that God. I'm going to do that God. You're mixing faith with it. That word now, it sticks in you. Can you say amen? And that word now will work in your life because you're hearing it with the intent to do what it says. Can you say amen? amen. Not only that, but praise God, the believer's life of faith involves knowing your victory has been provided. Oh my, I love, I love, I love looking at Hebrews chapter, uh, chapter, chapter four and verse three because it lets me know God has already provided my escape from every destruction, everything that's not like God. For he says in verse three, for we which have believed do enter into rest. Oh my, hallelujah, into rest. Although the works were finished, when? From the foundation of the world. Did y'all catch that? That what you're going through now, God has provided a way out of it. Come on. Oh, oh, come on. Before the foundation of the world. Can you say amen? For he's speaking us, and when he says he provided before the foundation of the world, praise God, it, the, the Bible lets us know God had already given us a word so that we could have what he's already provided. And because we can have what he's already provided, he goes on to let us know in a powerful way that you and I have to labor, praise God, in verse 11 of chapter 4, to enter into the rest. What the, that's the only labor we have. And how is that? Joshua 1 and 8 gives us what we must do. This book of the law, this word of God shall not depart from our mouths, but we shall meditate in it day and night that we may observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then we'll, he'll make, our, we'll make our way prosperous and then we'll have have good success. Why? It's simply because, praise God, we've come into a place of believing his word and now we're resting. I tell you, the damn miracle power is working in your body, brother. Hallelujah. And, and you're going to speak with the tongue of the Lord. You say, how can you say that? Because God is a miracle worker. And you got to get to the place to know God's already provided a way of escape. Can you say amen? The Bible talks about it in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 when he says, Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you may be partakers or take part of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Praise God. I'm escaping every bit of the corruption. 
I'm escaping everything that's not like God because I have a word from the Lord and God had provided that word before the foundation of the world. Can somebody give God praise right there? In closing today, I want you to understand in a mighty way, hallelujah, that, that your faith is what's going to give you the victory in every situation in your life. And, you, and we have a faith that wins. And it's because the same faith we have is the faith that Jesus has. Y'all better hear me. I, I got a hold of this years ago in Galatians 2 and 20 when he says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My faith is really not my faith. I just got it. But it was his faith, and he gave it to me. And you got to understand, because his faith worked for him, his faith will work for you. And as you believe God, praise God, you'll come into the place you'll win every time. Every time. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. Every time. Every time, every time. And listen, don't you settle for defeat. Never. You know, like I heard um, a man said one time, he said, you look at living by faith like playing baseball. Uh, praise God. And they said three strikes in the eye. But no, you're not. Just keep swinging. And even if you don't knock it out of the park, just keep swinging until you knock it out of the park. You knock it out of the park when you get what you're believing God for. Are you here with me? And praise God, I'm telling you. You know, I, I know, see, when you've gone through some things and God has blessed you, God has, has given you what only God could do for you. And I know people, they, they, they talk about you. Oh, I've had some tough days. But the, praise God, God brought me through every one of them. Yeah. Oh, I've had some time when, 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 when it, it was just a shameful, praise God, of how the enemy had, uh, took advantage of me. Praise God, young in ministry. And so every time I see a young minister, I'm, I'm, my heart go out to them. Because I recognize, praise God, you're crazy most of the time. Although God's called you, you're still crazy. Oh, y'all ain't going to pray with me. You're still crazy. And I'm, how many scriptures you know? You still, you, they have, they're, you're not seasoned in what God wants to do with you. And until that time, you make a lot of mistakes. And one of the things is pride. And another thing is women. Uh, and another thing is fame. And, and you got to watch it, praise God, because you got some old men, they're trying to go back to when they were young. You can't go back, brother. You can't broke, go back. Don't get a new model. You can't have the old model you got. No, you got to get to the place to recognize is that God, God is so long-suffering. Y'all hear me? And God is so forgiving. And God is so merciful. And God is, God, God is so graceful. Are y'all here with me? But he's, not, he's, he's all of that because he don't want to leave you where you are and he wants to bring a change in your life. And I don't care what's in your life right now. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. Would you move this out of the way just for me? Can I move? Just give me about five minutes, brother. Come, brother, praise God. I don't want to, I don't want to lift in the service, but I, I got something in my heart. I want, to, I want God to move on your life. All this word didn't go forth just to say, boy, listen to that. No, God wants you to do something. God wants you to do something with what you've received. Your faith right now has been elevated. Praise God. Not because of me, because you got the best preacher in this whole, whole region. Praise God, Pastor Dennis Creighton can flat, flat out preach. You hear me? Listen, I've been around a lot of folk, but, but praise God, I, I just love to hear the man preach. I just sat there like. But the thing about it is, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if you're here tonight and you recognize, God, there's some things I need to let God, God got to do in my life. I want to join my faith with yours and it's going to happen. I want you to come forward just very quickly. I'm not going to be laying hands on nobody. You don't have to fall out in the floor in the name of Jesus. But I tell you what, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to release my faith with you. And I believe with all my heart, God's going to do a work in your life. And that's it, sister. That's the way you do it. See, when you when you when you got God in your heart, just stand right there. Amen. When you got God in your heart, and you you're not a, it's not about people, it's about Him. You say, look, I gotta have this. It's some things I'm believing God for. He's gonna release His faith with me because so, sometimes you just need somebody to hook on with you. Can you say, Amen? Hallelujah. 
and God began to move in your life like never before. Praise God. And I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to believe God with all my heart. And you believe God with all your heart. And God, listen, change is about to happen right now. Change is about to happen right now. You heard me say early, you don't have to get nothing from God. What did I say you had to do? It's, it's what you have to do in there? Receive. 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 You got the Holy Ghost, you received Him. You got saved and born again, you received salvation. And you, you received. Somebody say, I received. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, to Glory to God. And listen, get, be, like a, be, be like a hand catcher. At least get ready to. Just open your hands up. Open your body up. And say, praise God. And just say, God, I'm receiving right now. I'm receiving right now. And the power of God is coming on you right now. Even while you say it. I remember a lady by the name of Angie Ray used to be in Chicago. I used to go up there and preach all the time at a church. And she said, Pastor, you're going to wear yourself out, pre laying hands on everybody and prophesying to everybody. And, and, and you know, I mean, water was coming out of my shoes. And she said, just get them and get them open up to God. And if it's a demon, you'll see it. Just cast them out and go on about your business. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And I'm going to pray. And when I pray, praise God. Listen, whatever you're dealing with, it's going to be released. It's going to be released. It's going to be released. It's going to be released, God. Come on. Come on. Get, get your spirit open, praise God. And it's going to be released, God, even now as I receive, as you receive, as you receive. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, these are your sheep, God. These are your people, God, from everyone that have come forward in the name of Jesus. And God, I want to thank you right now. God, as they've come forward, God, everything they believe in for, I release my faith with them. And I call, God, for that thing to come to pass. I call for their bodies to respond to the word of God. I call, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for their finances to line up, God. I call, God, in the name of Jesus, great relationship to come into divine order like never before God I come against every spirit of the enemy that will try to keep them from having what you want them to have and doing what you want them to do and being who you want them to be I come against every demonic spirit that will try to hamper them and hinder them and God the future that you have for him I have the power of God that's within me with an apostolic anointing I release God I release and activate within them the power of God to do what they couldn't do but you're going to do it through them in Jesus name in Jesus name oh my name God do your work now every one of them from the oldest to the youngest do your work, God. Uh, give them a bold spirit, God. I learned from Brother Kenneth E. Hagin, I can pray for boldness, God. Give them a bold spirit. Give them a bold spirit that they'll stand and, and they'll rejoice. Give them a bold spirit, Lord God, that they'll be a witness for you, God. And this church will fill up and Mount Pleasant Church will fill up. Give them a bold witness, God, in every area of their lives. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you. We come against every sickness, every malady. We come against every digestive problem. We come against every problem with limbs, God, and, and, and legs and knees, God. We come against every problem in their ankles, God. Every uh, female problems, we, we come against it right now, God. We come against those hot flashes. We command them to stop in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we release a faith, God, even now for the glory of God coming upon every person. God, that, uh, that lazy, lackadaisical spirit, God, of the enemy that tried to lull them into a place of lethargicness. We come against it in the name of Jesus. And we believe a supernatural change coming forth, coming forth, coming forth, God, coming forth, coming forth, God, right now. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout, I receive, I receive. Lord God, do your work now, God. Your children, God, have received. Your children, God, have received. God, let it be, let it be, let it be. Let it be, God. Your children have received in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all go in the presence of God. Can I pray for your wife, brother? 
I want to pray for her. I want to pray for my sister, Alicia. Praise God. Come here, wife. I want you to just lay, lay your hand. Y'all stretch your hands towards you, Alicia. You, know, you can just stand right there, baby. That's good enough. That's good enough. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, God, I've been praying. I've been seeking your face, God. And in the name of Jesus, my wife has an anointing in her, in her hands, oh God. And God, I have an anointing on my hands, oh God. We lay hands on Alicia. And God, we believe for every good gift, God. Be lavished upon her, God. Restore, restore. God, restore from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, God. In the name of Jesus, uh, we know maybe what the doctor is saying, but we know what you say. You say she's heal and she says she's healed she says she delivered God and in the name of Jesus God God turn it around God turn it around I speak a prophetic word over her God turn it around in Jesus name and in the name of Jesus I speak life I speak life into her I speak life God like never before God in the name of Jesus God you said lay hands on the sick and they recover she's recovering in Jesus name 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 and I believe I was do it God God do it for me God do it for me God do it for your husband. Do it, God. We're your servants, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. In Jesus' name. I call it done. I call it done. I call it done. Somebody give God praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, let me release this and I'm gone. The Lord wanted me to let you know that because you're at the cutting edge of what he's going to do in this last day, that the enemy has come with all kinds of attacks. And sometimes many of you have not seen them. You have not experienced what has come from the leadership and through the leadership and what is even happening. But but God says it has not stopped you. It has not stifled you. It may have hindered you, but it has not stopped you or stifled you. And God says, as you begin to rally after me like never before, you'll begin to see what the enemy meant for evil. God's going to turn it around for good. And God says, as I turn it around, you'll begin to see I'm not only going to bless the leadership and bless his family, but I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your family. Because as you begin to rally around me, saith the Lord, and begin to call up on me, you'll begin to see me move like you've never seen me move before. Because I'm looking for a place that I can show myself strong. And, and this is the place, saith the Lord. This is the place that I'm going to do a work like never before. And even though you've been in places where it seemed like there was many more people and there was many much more of this and much more of that God said that was then but this is now but what's going to happen now it's going to be the choice of the choice that's going to begin to come and flow into this house and as they flow into this house they're coming not just to receive some stuff but they're coming to do and for perform ministry like never before and this name the name of this church will be gone will go out all over the world and people are going to begin to come to Christ and I'm going to use your man and woman of God like like never before as they preach the gospel they're going to be going here and there and I'm going to raise up people here that, that, that this will be a base but as I raise them up here and this become a base for him he'll always come back and he'll do the work here that needs to be done and this area this region is again is going to flower it's going to flower like a flower that's been, been watered by heaven saith the Lord and as I begin to water this place saith the Lord you're going to begin to see uh, praise God people are going to begin to flow into it in the 
this last day and when it becomes uh, all that I've created it to be, my son is coming back. And when my son comes back, he's going to give you a welcome uh, word saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant, for you've been faithful over the things that I've given you. I'll make you ruler over much, saith the Lord. God bless you is my prayer. Bless you. Come on, give God praise in the house tonight. Mm. See, when I envision this meeting, that's exactly what I'd envision. Just word, 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 word. <laughs> because that's the only thing that's going to change our life is the word of God. And he's come, he comes with the word of God, man. Oh, my God. I'm so full right now. It's, it's kind of hard for me to close. I know it's time to go. But, uh, man, I love y'all, boy, I tell you. Now, Pleasant, y'all like family to me, man. So I love you guys. Bridge builders, it's time to get it. The rest of you, it's time to go for it. And uh, I'm at a place in my life where it just don't matter. Nothing else matters but doing the will of God. So, everybody want to jump on board? Let's get it. Uh, praise God. <laughs> Can y'all shout for my wife and just declare the healing power of God over her life? My God. You saw it like it was. But the day she stands up and begins to declare this word, your life, you, you're going to trip out. You're going to be like, I was there when it happened. My God. God's not done yet, I'm telling you. He's not done yet. There was a prophetic word that went forth years ago. Dr. Dollar said, you haven't seen what God wants to do through this little woman of God. But I'm telling you, there's a mighty power in her. And you'll see it all manifest as time continues to move forward. God's ready to progressively move the body of Christ forward and for us all to step into what he has for us. I want you to buckle up, get ready. Whatever the devil come with, we got the authority to overcome it. Amen? We have the authority, the power to overcome all of his ability. So we're going to step in it because faith is the victory that overcometh the world. Amen? And we win. We just heard tonight, faith makes us win. And uh, so let's, let, man, just give God a hand clap tonight. Thank God for Pastor Charles Orr and, and, and Pastor Ter Ter Tamara Orr, prophetic voices in this earth realm, man. Such a powerful uh, partnership and a powerful marriage and powerful pastors that they are, man, of just a beautiful people. And uh, we love them, man, and thank God for them. Listen, um, if you're here tonight and you did not get a chance to sow, we want to give you a chance to sow into this word. Put the screen up, show them, and you can get an envelope. I'm not going to belabor the point. I just want to at least make that available to you tonight. And then last but not least, you don't want to miss tomorrow night. Pastor Eddie Walton is going to close this meeting out. You know, I had a little something to say last night. Tonight, it just, oh, my God. But tonight, tomorrow night, I'm, I'm expecting supernatural manifestation like you've never seen before. He doesn't even know what God's going to do through him tomorrow night. There's so much that has been prayed for, and I'm, I'm sucking. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm declaring that we drain them of everything that God has put within them for us. I want everything. I want them to leave just, just, just wet, you know what I'm saying? Sweaty, whatever it takes, but I want everything that God has put in them released in this house. Man, you know, if anybody steps on this podium, you got to know I trust not only them, but the God in them to do what God has called them to do. So you don't want to miss tomorrow night. I know, I know Mount Pleasant, y'all been in church all week, but if you got one more night in your boy, I would encourage you to come and be a part of what God does tomorrow. But we got to go tonight. 
I'm just going to pray for you. You got anything you want to say tonight before you, before we leave? Uh, Pastor Darrell, blessings to you, man. We declare all that God is doing in you. Listen, he is faithful to complete what he started. And you got to know you got people on your side praying with you, praying for you. That's my guy, man. He, he's something serious. Uh, you know, back in the day, uh, I was... Uh, you know, playing ball, I, I used to beat him all the time. And so he, he has a grudge against me concerning that. See, I got the mic tonight. I can say what I want to say, praise the Lord. But anyway, uh, bless him, man. Give the man of God a great hand clap, amen. Come on, lift your hands, receive tonight's final blessing. If you want to sow, ushers will have buckets available as you exit tonight. Uh, come on, lift your hands. Father, we thank you for this anointing. We thank you for this presence. And we don't want to leave it, Lord, so we're taking it with us and allow you to minister to us beyond tonight and allow the word that we've heard tonight to change our hearts and to change our lives forever. And we give God praise in Jesus' name for your life. I pray as you leave tonight that the faith and the favor and the power of God go with you, and I call you blessed in Jesus' name. If you receive it, shout amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a great night. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Keep bridging the gap so you can uh, see the power of God work in your life. Amen. Have a on your way out. And remember, we love you. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m.